Hey, all right. What a great way to start with two minutes. All right. So, hey, everyone. Thanks for coming. <laughs> I appreciate your time. Sorry about those first two minutes. Uh, here's how we're going to spend it. Uh, I'm basically just going to get through a few slides and then I'm going to spend the entire time building one with you. I'm going to take the flow we built last time and I'm going to create a new flow uh, with you. I'm going to take the old flow and I'm going to kind of make it more advanced, if you will. And I'm going to aim to end at the exactly at the bottom of the hour, but I might go a few minutes over simply just because of how much content I have. And then we'll take your questions. <laughs> and now that they can hear me, if this is your first time uh, joining me, please don't try to click along with me. If anything, please go watch webinar part one of this one, but don't click along. In this one, I'm gonna actually go pretty fast through a lot of content. And I would just think you would you would feel better about it if you just sat back, relaxed and more or less enjoyed the show, um, as opposed to trying to do it with me. Anytime you got questions though, Put them in the sidebar. Uh, we've got Shadanta on the keyboard today helping us out. So she'll be fielding your questions and throwing them at me at the bottom of the hour. And uh, don't worry about writing everything down. This whole thing's being recorded and this handout is available for download. And uh, you'll more or less get an email by tomorrow morning with a link to both. And uh, look, if I've got to sit through this webinar and you got to sit through this webinar, we might as well have a good time. So let's try to make it fun, all right? All right. So. Uh, last time we spoke about just flows. How are they different than process builder? How are all the ways that you can launch them? And then we created a flow that creates an opportunity, just a simple record creation. So what we're gonna do this time is we're gonna actually take it up a notch and uh, I'm gonna give you some quick wins. I think I'm gonna help you walk through a use case that's pretty generic for everybody that you're pretty much all gonna wanna use. And then I'm gonna show you two little visual, a couple little visual things you can do that make interacting with flows really nice. So the first one is selecting related records and doing stuff with them. Do you want to have a flow on the opportunity page where people pick specific products and then something happens with the three they picked or the five they picked? That's what I'm going to show you, right? So if you're on an account, pick the contacts. If you're on the uh, opportunity, pick the products, but related records. So what I'm going to show you is that. Uh, and also I'm going to show you how to automatically redirect users to records. So let's say you create, you do a flow and at the end of the flow and opportunities created. I'm going to show you how sure you could have a link to the opportunity like we did last time. Okay. Uh, but there's actually an action you can create that will redirect the screen entirely. So when your user hits next, they're just taken to that new record that's created. That's pretty easy. Uh, you can display images in your flow. Uh, so you can literally upload an image into Salesforce into the static resources and then you can literally just put the name of that static resource into the flow and now you've got images. So if you want to make it a little bit more, more fr uh, friendly to end users, that's a great way to do it. And then the last one here is flow stages. So I'm going to show you how to add stages to your flow to let your users know where they are in the process and how that works. Okay. All right, so uh, really, that's all the slides I have. The whole point of this is for me to get in there and just do it with you. So let's jump in. <laughs> all right. So uh, here I am in our previous demo environment. And what you'll notice is this is the flow we built last time. So it takes an opportunity name, takes a dollar amount, takes a close date and a stage, and it creates an opportunity, just creates a deal. What we're going to do is update it to be this one. There's going to be a picture in there. All right. That's always fun. Uh, there's going to be a, a process in here so you can see your progress indicator. Uh, and then let me show you what this one does. So we'll call it doing it live part two. I'm really going to keep doing that part two thing. All right. And how much is it? 500,000. Uh, I love it. All right. Close date, uh, the 30th. And then here is the difference. Who are my selected contacts? I've actually got Shadant in here, Joey in here, and Tommy. So I'm going to click next. Now notice. We still do what the old flow did. We still have the link to the deal. And notice my progress updated. I'm now in stage two or step two. But now when I go next, it really just redirects me to the deal we just created. And hey, those people that I checked off and only those people were created as contact roles. That's what we're going to build today. All right. So, all right. <laughs> So I just feel like that was a lot of words to throw out there. So uh, I'm going to start with the last one we did, this doing it live uh, webinar, no, this doing it live flow. This is the one we created together. And I'm going to just save this as an entirely new flow. So we're just going to call this, uh, I shouldn't call it doing it live again. I'll call it May webinar. Okay. So it's in May. Uh, doing it live part two. Okay. <laughs> I told you I'll put it everywhere. All right. So now I've got a new version of that flow. I'm not messing with the other flow. I've saved as a new version of the flow. 
So first thing I'm going to do just to simplify this is I'm getting rid of this decision that really was just there to show you what decisions are, but there's no reason to say if the deal's too small or the deal's too big, we're just not doing it. So in this case, we've got the starting screen. And in the starting screen, we want to add the list of contacts that you can select. So I'm going to do a checkbox group. A regular checkbox would only let you pick one op option. A checkbox group lets you pick many options. So we'll name this checkbox uh, uh, screen, okay? Or you know what, contact screen selection. Yeah. Um, and then, well, what choices are going to show up? Now, remember, uh, last time we spoke about the different kinds of variables, the different kinds of resources. There are three types of choices I could pick. I could pick a regular choice, so me just making up names, uh, Coca-Cola, Shadanta, Iman, whatever. There's pick list choice. This is actually taking a field and using the field as the pick list, so stage name, industry, things like that. In this case, I want to get a list of records. So I actually want to get uh, contact all right, so I actually want to go get all of the contacts that are related to this account. So I'm going to say, get me all the contacts. And is it just getting every contact in Salesforce? No, it's only getting the contacts that are related to this account. And so I'm using the account ID. And we also know what account I'm looking at because we passed in the record ID. So we pass in what account we're on. And I'm going to use that to say, only get me the contacts on that account. All right. And, uh, do we need to sort them? Don't really care. Do we want to uh, limit the number? Ah, it's fine. Uh, so what field will everyone see? If you're looking at the list of people returned, you're going to see their name. I'm going to show you their name. I could have showed you their title, their phone number, their email. I'm going to show you their name. Um, but what am I actually going to save in the flow? When someone selects that, that record, what am I actually going to save? I'm actually going to save the record ID. So what I'm saying here is show the user the contact name. But when they select a contact, make sure you save the ID because I'm going to use that later. That, that's what we're saying. All right, and uh, I'm going to hit done. So now I've cr created these choices and I'm going to put that choice set right here. Great. So now we've got the choices. Okay. Um, so what I want to do is create the opportunity and then I want to create contact roles on that opportunity. So what do we do? Uh, step two, um, we actually want to create the opportunity. The opportunity needs to exist before contact roles can exist. Uh, so let's go ahead and now uh, loop through um, those choices. Well, you can't loop, this is the confusing part. You can't loop through this screen selection. These records that came back, you can't loop through them. They're not actually records. Even when the user selects them, they're not multiple things that you can loop through. When, when people select option one, option two, option three, it really does just save the records as like separate uh, values with a semicolon in between. So it would just save them like that. It's a big text file or text field more or less. So we actually need to now create the list of records we actually want to loop through. That's the weird thing. The options the user see on the screen is different than the options we actually loop through. So I'm going to get, the, I'm going to actually now go and get the record. So now I'm not getting a selection of records. I'm getting the actual record. So get the contacts. What records am I getting? I'm getting the contacts. And this should make sense here in a minute. I'm getting the contacts. Am I getting all the contacts? No, I'm getting all the contacts on this account. This is exactly the same search I did before. But instead of returning a list for a user to see, I'm returning a list for us to work with in the flow. Okay. So now it's getting back all the record IDs. Um, do you want to just bring back one contact or all of them? No, no, no. Bring, bring back all of them. Great. Um, and where are we going to store it? Well, I don't have anywhere to store it yet. So I'm going to create yet another resource to store it. So we're going to create a variable and it's called all the contacts returned and uh, what is it it's a record is it one record or many records uh, it's many records great oh what is it it's a record and it's a contact great so now i'm storing a record of contacts okay so now i know where i'm going to put these lists of contacts 
Um, but what fields do you want? So this is basically querying the database and putting the list in here. So I'm going to get the ID. You could get their name if you wanted. If you ever want to deal with their phone numbers, their emails, if you ever want to deal with any field on any of those related contacts, you go grab those fields right now. You're telling Salesforce, go into, go into Salesforce, grab all the contacts that are related to the account, uh, uh, put all of them in this collection of variables, and make sure you get these fields for me. These are the fields I want to work with. In this case, I, I really only care about ID, but I'm showing you how to get other fields. All right. So now we've got all of our contacts and we want to loop through these contacts. So I'm going to loop through each contact. So we're going to loop through each contact. And what am I looping through? I'm looping through all of the contacts that came back. So I'm querying all the contacts related to the account and I'm going to loop through every single one. And every time I loop, what it's doing is it's taking, let's say, 10 and it's taking the first one and it's going to put it into a single contact variable and it's going to do the loop then it's going to go to the next one it's going to put that into a single variable and you use that inside the loop and you just kind of keep going and keep going so in this case i need a single contact record this is the single version of the list so that when we loop through it we're looking at that one record so here i'm just going to call it uh, the one contact okay and what is it it's a contact okay all right, so I'm taking one contact out of the list and I'm putting them in this one contact variable. Now, whenever we do anything inside this loop, uh, I can use that one contact variable to know which one we're iterating on. All right, so what are we going to do? Uh, I'm basically going to uh, 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 create something here. So we are now going to create a contact role. So we're going to create another variable, contact role single. So what am I going to create? I'm going to create a record. What record? A contact role. There we go. All right. So now I've got an individual contact role object that I can do something with. Okay. So I am now going to say, let's do a assignment. A, uh, define my contact role. And here's the magic. So what I'm going to say is for this one contact role that we're making right now, uh, go get the contact that we're get, we need, and the contact is um, where is the one here? The one contact we're looking at right now, and go get their ID. So whatever contact we're looking at, that's the contact we're going to make in the contact role. Well, what opportunity does this contact role relate to? Uh, this contact role relates to this opportunity, and so I'm just going to use the ID of the opportunity we just created. We we Create an opportunity, we know what it is, that's what it is. And the only other field you need for contact roles is uh, the actual role field. So who is it, what deal is it on, and what's the role? And in this case, oops, uh, role. And in this case, I'm gonna pick business user. There, so now I can go into the loop, and for each one of these contacts, I can create a new contact role, and another contact role, another contact role. But I don't wanna create one for every contact, I only want to do it for the selected contacts, right? This is where we figure that out. This is the part the whole webinar is really about. You create a decision, okay? And what you need to say here is, was this contact selected? All right? And so, uh, yes, it was. And so what I'm doing here is I'm taking that original list of what people selected. So let's look at the screen and we had the contact screen selection so this is the list the user selected these are the three check boxes they checked and i'm going to say does that list contain the id of the record i'm looking at right now so i'm looking at a contact so this is let me explain this is this is really the whole thing i've got an account this account has 10 contacts i have to go get those 10 contacts twice I go get them once to show the user on the screen so they can pick them. I get them again so that I actually have them as records to do stuff with in the flow. So now I've got my list of all the potential records the user could have selected. And I'm gonna loop through the whole list. And every time I loop through the list, I'm gonna say, is this record one of the ones that was selected? That's what I'm doing here. I'm checking the which ones were selected. I'm checking to see if this one was selected. And if it was, then we are going to uh, create this record. Otherwise, I'm um, just go back 
just go back to the loop, right? So now I've got a loop. This loop will go in to uh, this, this if, was this contact selected? Yes, if it was, create the contact role and we're done. Now you would want to actually create the contact role in the loop. A lot of people want to create the contact role record in the loop itself. Um, that's not what we want to do. That's a bad, that's not a good best practice. What if someone selected 50? You're going to do 50 separate pushes to the database. That's not how you want to do it. Instead, you want to take all the changes you would make, put them into a single list, and then at the very end, push the changes of that single list. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create a new list. And this is another variable, and it's all of the new contact roles. So this is going to be my list of all the records we want to create. Not each individual one, it's all of them put into a list. So contact role. Okay, so we've got a list of contact roles. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to say, look, we've defined what my contact role is. But let's add it to the list. So I'm going to say here, let's add it to the list. So add to list. All right. And I've got my uh, new contact roles. And I'm going to add that single contact role to the list. There we go. So now every time we go through this loop, it's going to say, is this contact one of the ones they selected? It is. If it is, create the contact role, create the order, create the asset, create the whatever. Put that one that I created in the list, a big list, uh, and then the loop's done, <laughs> okay? All right, cool. So I just made it a big list, loop's done. Let's actually now create those records in the database. So actually create records. How many records? A bunch of them. Which records? The list of records we wanna make, done. Okay, there we go. And now I'm going to grab that screen here that we had from before. I'm just going to put it down here at the bottom. So let me move down. So we now should have been able to uh, uh, go through the page, pick the contacts, go through each contact, create contact roles, and then see the opportunities. So let's see that work. Save as a new version. Okay, so we saved May webinar as a new version. We're going to activate it so we can play with it. Okay, there it is. And let's go add it to the account page layout and see it do something. So I'm going to go to the page and I'm going to create a new tab just to separate things out. We're going to call it live because I'm doing it live with you. Okay, uh, and in the live tab, I'm going to put my flow that we just built. Which flow? The May webinar flow. And yes, I'm going to pass in the record ID. So what account are we on? That's it. Whew. Man, I really hope I explained that in a way that people felt comfortable with. Because if you understand that design paradigm of one searching for records is for the pick list values or the check boxes and the other getting records. So when you filter through, that's what's, what's really helpful. So let's go live. Here we go. So uh, we give it a name, uh, May webinar. We give it an amount, 500 or 5,000. We give it a close date. We give it a stage and then we pick, let's just say Tommy and Joey. Hit next. Sorry, Shadanta. I should have picked Shadanta. Ooh, I missed something. I missed something. All right, well, let's see what error I get. That's always interesting. And hopefully it's a quick fix. Oh, I know exactly what I missed. I feel it. I feel it in the force. Okay, hold on, let me just check. Um, well, I actually have a working version of this one that we can walk through here in one second. That's the problem with flows. Any little thing goes wrong, uh, and it's very hard to uh, quickly quickly see what that is. Let me see here. All right, I got an email. Let's just check the email together. What's the problem? I'm missing a required field. What field am I missing? Contact ID. Could have sworn I had contact ID. All right, we'll try that. We'll check the flow one more time. Maybe I missed that. Otherwise, I'll jump to uh, the other more built out flow. I'm gonna come down here, actually create the records. Oh, no, I don't know what I'm missing. That looks right to me, contact role. Oh, there we go. That's it. 
there we go. I was I was trying to assign, uh, I, I picked the wrong contact ID. There we go, that should do it. Save as, save it as a new version. See, this is why it's challenging. You make a little mistake like that and the whole thing doesn't work. Uh, and you have to kind of just be very diligent. For me, it's a little tough because I'm doing it live in front of 200 people and I'm trying to be quick about it. Hopefully you do yours slower. All right, so there we go, let's try it again. Refresh the page. Hopefully we've got the new one here. I'm just gonna refresh one more time and we'll just, we'll run through it real quick. So, A, 3000. And now I'll pick should not. <laughs> Good luck, Char, here we go. There we go. So the opportunity was created and I can link to the deal, okay? Uh, and we can open the deal this way. And when I go there, you'll now see that there are uh, contact roles, Joey and Shadanta there. So that's nice. Um, great. But how do we get the auto routing to work? Well, so you'll actually need to create a lightning component, but don't freak out because all the code is literally given to you. So what you will do is you will create a lightning component. Just You'll give it a name like they tell you to do in the instructions. instructions. I'm just telling you. You'll do something like this, okay? And then it'll tell you in the component section, copy paste this code. In the controller section, copy paste this code. So you won't have to know what any of it means. You just have to know how to create one and it tells you how to create one. But once you create one, you can start doing auto redirects. So I've already created it um, based off the link here. So there's a link that I'll give you that just gives you literally the code. So just so you know what you're looking at here, uh, it'll tell you how to do it. It tells you how it works. And then it tells you copy paste this into this section, that into that section, and when you're done, you have exactly what I have in the in the demo. Okay. So um, here's what you do. Let's go down to the bottom of the flow, and I'm going to add a new action. Okay. And I've got an action in here called navigate. So I created my widget, my component, and I called it navigate to record. So I'm going to call it redirect user. Okay. Um, and you can pass in where you want to redirect people to. You can just give it the record ID. So if you created a new opportunity, a new account, a new something, you put the record you want to navigate to in there, and that's it. When users go to that page, when that flow hits that page, it will re it'll navigate the user somewhere else. So there's a lot of things you can do uh, with these custom lightning components that run. Uh, basically, you can put any JavaScript, uh, any logic you like here. So it gets really, really powerful. Um, but there, I'm just going to save that. And uh, instead of saving it and then updating and showing it to you working, I'm going to take the next step as well. So how do you do this thing? How do you do the thing where you get these stages? How does this work? Okay. So it's another component that you go get, but once you get the components, everything else is ready to go in Salesforce. So here's, here's what you would do. You go to your manager, you go to resources, and you're going to build stages one by one. So in honor of Shadanta, we will call stage one Shadanta, okay? And it's stage one, and it's active. So when it's active, it means it shows up in the list. It doesn't mean it's the stage you're on, it just mean it means it shows up. So if I have three stages total, I would have three active stages, okay? So I'm gonna pick stage one, uh, and then we'll create one more, and we'll just call it stage two to be somewhat normal, stage two. Okay, there we go. And the order here is two, and it's on, okay? So now you have your stages. But there's no default stage set. We don't know what the current stage is. Uh, so you do a quick assignment right out of the gate. So update stage, okay? And what you do is notice the flow itself has a variable. So you can tell that the uh, flow's current stage is, and then give it stage one, or in this case, Shadanta stage, okay? And so now, before you get to stage one, the screen, I set that we're in stage one. And then later, somewhere way further down before state before you see the screen again i come in here and i'm gonna go stage two update and i'm gonna now change the flows current stage to stage two and that is how you actually update the stages and when you want them on the when you actually want them on the page you go into the page you find your flow stage component that you've built drag it where you want, uh, first stage, give it a name because everything has a name, and then you pick the current stage. So I'm going to go to the flow and get whatever the current stage of the flow is, and then I'm going to go to the, all the stages, and I'm going to get the list of all the active stages. So that's how you set up the, the component. And when you do that, you now have 
the stages. Okay, so I'm only gonna add it to the first screen. I'm not gonna take the time to uh, add it to the second screen. And then there's one more thing I wanna show you, images. So there's actually something here called display image. Okay, so you can drag that right here. Now, if you wanna display images, just drag any file you want into the static resources in setup. So go to setup, look for static resources, upload a file and just give it a name. So this is the image I've uploaded. It's just a trailhead logo, okay? Uh, and I've named it trailhead logos. I'm gonna copy that. So now I've dropped a display image in here. I'm gonna give it a name, because again, everything has a name. So image on screen. What's the name of the actual file? It's trailhead logo. So I'm literally, caps matter, everything matters. Uh, and then there's even some nice things here. Like you can just type in the word center if you want the image centered, or you can do some styling to it around the edges or set the width. So you can you can type values in here if you like. Hit done. Uh, that's it. Let's save as, save a new version. Uh, you know what? I have two minutes. I might as well um, add the stages to the final screen as well, just to make it a fully featured demo. So adding stages to the last screen. Again, what's the current stage? <laughs> and I'm getting whatever the current stage of the flow is. And then what are all the stages available? And I'm getting a list of all the stages available. Okay, there we go. Save, save as new. All right, uh, and I'm gonna just activate it. And assuming I didn't make a little flub, we're gonna go to the May webinar, I'm gonna activate it. And assuming I didn't mess up, let's refresh the page. You know what, I'd feel more comfortable I refresh the page a couple times, just make sure I clear the cache. You don't want to be testing the wrong version of something. Okay, and let's go to my live one. So, oh, hey, there we go, Shadanta, stage one, all right. Hey, there's my picture, centered. All right, let's give it a name. Uh, I hope it works. <laughs> okay, how much? Five million dollars. Uh, what's the close date? The 30th, Shadanta and Tommy. Uh, you know what, we'll do Joey too. Hit next. And we should be in stage two, we're in stage two. And look, I could click the link or, and it redirected. All right, so, man, we did it on time too. That's kind of, all right. I hope it made sense. Being on time is not important. I hope it made sense. Look, the thing I really want you all to take away is that when you look, and I, I, I know I've said it a lot, but you're this is the thing you're gonna encounter over and over and over again. It's this list that the user plays with is not the same list your flow plays with, right? So if you were to look at that flow we built, what did we do? Just one more time. We set the stage, we get user info, and then we just go ahead and create the opportunity because you know we need to create the opportunity. But then I get every contact that could be an option. Everything that I showed you that is an option, I got the same list again. We loop through all of them, and I'll, this is really the magic, so I'll show it one more time, where we wanna make sure that the select, the list of all the ones selected contains the ID of the specific record we're iterating on right now. So if I went through 50 contacts, is this the contact they picked? Nope. Is this the contact they picked? Nope. Is this the contact they picked? Yes. And that's where we create the actual records that we want but we don't insert them inside of a loop because that's how you're gonna hit limits really, really quickly and Salesforce doesn't like that. So instead we add them to a list. We keep making the list longer and longer and longer. And when the loop's all done, we just create, we just create all the records at once using the really long list. And believe it or not, that's way more efficient, like super efficient. Uh, and then we update the stage, show you a nice screen and then redirect to the final, final record you want. Okay. Man, geez. Uh, so if you have not watched Flows Part 1, I'm sorry, I left you so far behind. But please click that link and go watch it. And if you just want a refresher anyways, there's a link. Go watch it. For both of those custom components I showed you, the override, finish behavior, and the progress indicator, both those custom components, those are links to the Salesforce provided code to just get get it working so what i showed you is literally what i copy pasted off the website and created the components you can obviously tweak them and make them your own but it just works um, also some good links to trailhead some good links to videos and docs as last time uh,
on Tuesday, I'm going to be talking about customer self-service. So how do you help customers help themselves deflect cases, deflect phone calls? Why do you need Shadanta to tell me what my order status is when I can just look up my own order status, right? Uh, and then Thursday, office hours. I'm sure I generate a lot of questions, so come and ask me questions. All right, so with two minutes over, and I apologize, Shadanta, are there any any questions you want to zoom in here with me or scoot in here with me? Yeah, we actually have a handful of questions here. All right. So Ross asks, so how can one create a button and flow that assigns a record to a user that is associated with, say, an account, let's say? All right. So um, I don't, well, do you need a button? Do we really need a button or could it automatically happen? Uh, but what would it do, right? How would that flow generally work? It would do something like, get the ID of the record we're on. What record is this flow on? So don't forget that. We got to give it context. So all right, now I know where I am. What user should I go get? You might have an owner field, a local service rep field, manager field. I don't know what field you're using, but you have to tell the flow which user to assign it to. So if it's related to the account record, you're going to have to get the account record and get that field. If it's not, you're just gonna have to do some other logic, you know, like is it in the industry, is it in the high tech industry? Get Shadante because she's our high tech PM. And so she always gets those, right? So is it a field or is it just some business logic? If it's a field, you're gonna get that accounts field. And then you're literally gonna just do a uh, create record or update record to, to change that ownership to that new person or create the new record and assign to that person or create a task and assign it to that person. So there's a lot you can do there, but I don't even think you need a flow for that. Just saying, um, Process Builder is a pretty straightforward, much simpler automation tool and Process Builder can create records and update owners of records. So if you just want to update record ownership and the logic's not too complicated, start with Process Builder. But if you got to do some kind of really in-depth, have Shadon to pick one of five based on, you know what, then maybe the flow logic might, might be better. Hopefully that helps. What else? Yeah, so Corey asks, and I believe I learned this through your, your webinar right now. I made her watch answer. right before this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I'll ask it anyway. So uh, how do you avoid hitting iteration limits with loops? So you know, contacts are maybe a little bit smaller than something like opportunity line. Yeah, that's okay. So so when you so there's a concept called bulkification with Salesforce. We are a shared infrastructure, right? Um, you are on a pod with about 10,000 other customers. And so, for example, uh, if someone were to write some code that had an infinite loop in it, okay, and they just let it run, they, let's say I had an infinite loop, I would be consuming those resources for all time and other people couldn't use it. It'd be like if we lived in a big apartment complex and I just kept my laundry uh, running in the washing machine all the time and no one else got to use it. So Salesforce puts limits in place, whether it takes way too long or whether you tried to do way too many things all at once, we put certain limits in place to help you uh, be a good tenant, if you will. Now these limits are pretty broad, okay? Um, and they're transaction limits. So for example, you create a record that fires a process builder rule, that creates another record, that fires an apex code trigger to launch, which creates two records, which fire another process builder rule, all of that, one transaction. If you hit your transaction limit through any of that automated chain, the whole thing gets cut and rolled back. Okay. So uh, this flow could be launched as a child of many other things. And so who knows how long my transactional limit has already gotten, my transactional chain has already gotten. So this brings me to the idea of bulkification. It's better for everyone if you as a company or customer um, make all of the things you want to update, get them all together in a list, and then make one call updating everything. It's easier for the platform for you to send one update call with 2,000 things in it than it is to make 2,000 update calls. Okay. So the best thing I can tell you is don't make any create, any update, any get. You see these red ones? I wouldn't put any of these in a loop. If you put it in a loop, these are the things. These are creating records. These are these are actually editing records. These are uh, querying records. These are, so these are all things you're going to hit limits on right here. So if you put those in a loop, you're telling Salesforce, go get this. Okay, now go get it again. Now go get it again. It's like making me drive to the grocery store to get one item and then come back and then drive to the grocery store again. Just give me the list of the things you want. I'll go get them and I'll come back. So my best advice here is um, do not put any of these red things inside any loops. And if you do do Apex or link any other actions inside of loops, 
Um, I, I really wouldn't recommend, if you're doing things to manipulate records, do them on lists, not individual records inside of loops. Use the loops to manipulate individual records and then put them in lists that you're gonna go do stuff with. Okay, sorry. So Devin asked, when you were going through the example of say, hey, go grab all the contacts, mm -hmm. you had the option to put a limit. Yeah. What would, when, in what kind of situation would you have mm. a limit? Yeah, okay. Yeah, so let's say uh, I was gonna show you all of the, um, let's go to the manager here, opportunity stage. We have some choices, here we go. So this one. So here, why would I ever use this? Um, maybe my flow is gonna show your recent orders, okay? So what I would do is I'm not, I'm not doing contacts, now I'm doing orders, for example, okay? I could sort by order date descending, okay? Um, what if this customer has 300 orders? Do you want this list to be 300 long? It could be 300 long, but chances are you know that when you say recent order, last 20 orders is fine. Last five orders is fine. So uh, I typically see limiting the number of choices when you know you're doing most recent, biggest, oldest, newest, and you don't need to see 300. And frankly, uh, it's just a good UI thing. I've created flows just testing and I didn't put the limit in there. And then it comes back with like a chunk like this long. And it just, it just doesn't look as good. So if you want to keep the flow from looking super long, uh, put a limit in. And also if you want to limit options, you know, no one's interested in anyways, put a limit in. But yeah, you don't need to use it. Um, So Lori is curious, uh, can you build a flow that takes opportunity products and makes them assets? Yes, and in fact, uh, I have, uh, we have, I have one I can show it to you. So uh, I built that <laughs> uh, because I expected this. So here I've got another environment and I'll just show it to you real fast. I've got an account or I've got an opportunity. Uh, let's pick one that I hope has products in it. Here, here's some products. So what did I do? Here, uh, my flow will launch, I hope. Here we go. And I, instead of selecting contacts related to an account, I'm letting you select the products related to the opportunity. Trust me, it's the exact same thing, done the exact same way, but everywhere I use the word contact and account, you're gonna use opportunity line item and opportunities, right? But it's the same thing. And then here uh, I have options. I give people options. So I have a decision in my flow. Did they pick that they wanna delete them? Did they pick that they wanna create assets from them? What did they pick? And then based on what they picked, and in your case, create assets, I loop through the ones, I query all the products, I loop through the ones uh, that were selected, and I create asset records. I mean, literally, same exact thing we did with contact walls, but asset records. Yeah, so yes, yes. Uh, in fact, here's another option. Do you wanna take this opportunity and clone it with just some of the products and create a new opportunity? You do that. Do you wanna delete some of the products? You do that. So yes. That, that is the design pattern I want you to get used to because whether it's opportunities, orders, cases, contracts, you're gonna do it like this all the time. Right, so Brian is curious, is there any other way to auto launch a flow besides process builder? Another flow could launch a flow. I'm not sure if Apex can launch a flow, but I'm curious why you don't wanna use process builder to launch a flow. If, if you want to automatically launch a flow, when's it supposed to automatically launch? Uh, and does it launch when the record is updated or created or changed? And if it is, process builder is pretty, pretty good to go. So I'd love to hear your limitation or what you're trying to do more specifically, but I believe other flows, other uh, process builder, other flows, and I don't know off the top of my head if Apex can launch a flow. I wanna say, uh, I want to say yes, but I haven't done it. Apex from a flow, not the other way around. Calling flow from Apex. So yeah, it looks like there's things out there on it. So Apex, process builder, other flows. So oh, sorry, <laughs> chat bots. Bot, uh, conversational requests, uh, chat, SMS, those can fire off flows as well. Okay, sorry, go ahead. Carlos is curious, can, you ask, can we access me, the customers and people on this webinar, uh, access flows in your EDO org? Ooh, really good question. Not yet. Uh, and it's really just 
shameful on my part. I wanted to figure out which flows to build and I don't know which flows to put in the EDO. I want to use the EDO as like the ideal, you know, CRM and um, I don't know what to put in there yet. So I'm thinking I'm going to put a flow in per record. I think I'm going to have one in there for accounts, contacts, opportunities, leads. I'm going to do something like that. Literally had a meeting about it right before this webinar. It's not in there today. I'm sorry. Um, expect one in there in about two weeks. Expect like seven in there in about two weeks. So Katie is curious around logic inside of flow. So let's say that you have um, certain conditional requirements to be able to go grab records, whether it's based on a user who's accessing it or the record itself. Can you build logic into flows? Yeah. So that's what really makes flows powerful is the logic. So there's really two, there are many ways, but there, there are two ways you're going to use logic. One, uh, this decision uh, element. Okay. So this is logic. <laughs> That's what this is. It's a big if else, if else block. That's what this is. So for example, uh, who was, what was the name of the person who just spoke to us? Katie. Katie. So like, for example, Katie, uh, option A. All right. And what does it mean to be option A, right? It's when, you know, you pick any values you want and the criteria. So I'll just make something up here where the amount oops, is greater than 500. Okay, that's option A. Option B, right, is what? What? So here is where you keep coming up with your uh, options, okay? And then ultimately when you have your options, and I'm just gonna have two here, this is where you branch logic. So you can say, if it's A, go here. And if it's B, uh, skip that and go here, <laughs> right? And so that's how you would do logic from a flow perspective. Um, inside of the flow, other than that, um, it sounded like there was a little bit of a filtering question as well. So when you get records, you can be very specific as to which records you get, right? So you can only get records related to this account or only get records that are customers that were created by you know, whatever you're looking for. So I would say the two places you're going to find logic are the decision uh, tree, as well as anywhere you're going to be querying records and which records you're going to be quer querying. And if you notice, I just use the decision thing again inside the loop. I loop through each item. Is this one I want to mess with? Yes, that's logic. No, skip it and go to the next one. Okay, hopefully that helped. Uh, and also, by the way, if you have super complicated logic, you could launch Apex. You could fire Apex code or fire another flow. So if you needed to do some complex logic and just get an answer to spit back at you, you could have code go and get anything you want calculate whatever you want bring back a number give it to your flow and then your flow can just do a simple decision again so lots of little options like that okay sorry what else how are we doing on questions by the way should i go fast or do we not have that many uh yeah we have a, a couple just follow-up questions right. that i think i can uh tap an answer here but i'm just trying to see if there's any additional ones that are uh, great for the broader audience here yeah, I don't think we have any additional um, questions. Good ones for the audience. Yeah. I, and I'm, I'm sure, I'm sorry, I'm sure some of you have very specific tactical questions to your flow. I'm just not sure the general audience benefits from it. But um, please do me a favor. Uh, well, look, thank you for your time. Thanks for coming. I hope this was a good use of your time. Uh, if you need help with this stuff, oh, I have my flow here. Uh, interesting. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, look, just please fill out a survey if you get a chance. I'd appreciate it if you could just take a second and let me know what you think. This webinar, more than all other webinars, I've just had a lot of consternation. I've just been, uh, I've had a lot of anxiety because it's so much content in so little time. And though I think I'm explaining it in a way that's clear, I'm not sure that I am. And so I've dry, done a couple dry runs. I've explained it to people that aren't you, uh, but I would really love your feedback because I think this is one of the most capable parts of the platform and I would want to convey it in a way that makes sense. So please, if you don't mind, take a second to fill out a survey, good, bad, or indifferent. Thank you for your time. Have a good day and I'll catch you all next week. <laughs> Thanks, Shadata. Bye, everybody.